see Robert Plant the other week in Liverpool live for the second time. I didn't say that, I didn't mention that last time. Um, but we saw him at uh, Manchester Apollo, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Uh, were you ill? I was really ill the first time. It, this predates COVID even, this predates lockdown, it was years ago. Yeah. But this time I was in full health and yeah, we got to see him in all his glory, didn't we? Didn't, have any, didn't have any incense this time. So no, bit... we didn't have any incense, which I was like, that was a nice touch, Robert. Bring it back. That's all she, Bring went, it that's back. All she went for. <laughs> Nag Champa. <laughs> got there. Where's the incense? <laughs> it's like, I've paid for the tickets. It's like, is that all she cares about? <laughs> I thought the most important thing we should touch on, really, with regards to seeing him live, is the fact that obviously I was holding um, a competition. And you know the rules of the competition, don't you? Yeah, if they see you, they have to buy you a drink. Yeah. Yeah. 1,700 capacity at Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. That means that 1,698 of you decided to ignore me, blank me. You thought, oh, he's there. I just don't look at it. Pretend you'd not recognised him. Obviously, it's me. <laughs> Never known such a bunch of tight bastards in my entire life. <laughs> what is it? Five quid? It's Beaver Town as well. It's going straight back into Planty's back pocket because it's his son's brewery. He's funded it. Liquid rock and roll, and you can't even be asked to sort me out with a little drink after all these years. And the funny thing is, we saw someone saw you in Seville. Out yeah. of millions of people that live in that city, someone came up to us in Seville. And then also... Mike we were, from Canada. We were at a theatre in Manchester, like, the week before, and someone came up to you and recognised you, which was hilarious. So, yeah. All right, love, simmer down. Don't make, don't make it out to be bigger than it is, but I'm just I saying. I mean, it's just a small world, isn't it? I mean, both on both those occasions, again, no drink. <laughs> He's phenomenal. Uh, there's moments where he lets his voice go and it's like those cascading waves of like delay and reverb. You know when Planty belts a note from like his soul and it goes like, Ooh, I can't do it. Way down inside. It's a good impression that one. <laughs> he does it and it, gives, it gave me chills. But one thing I want to say though is that I don't get this with many people but it kind of doesn't make sense to me that I'm seeing that. It's almost seeing him there. It's almost like I can't believe I'm seeing Robert Plant live because Zeppelin and like even Plant's original stuff, nearly all of that predates me mm -hmm. being born. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it doesn't make sense. It's like, obviously I know it's him, but I'm like, is it really him? <laughs> is, that, is that the king of rock and roll right there? Like if, so like I found myself getting quite emotional throughout the whole thing because trying to shimmy out, out. shimmying out in his, his fancy shirt and his... Uh, yeah, he wore a really nice velvet, like a, oh, not velvet, well, it was like shiny rouge. I didn't get that close to him. It was like a shiny rouge shirt. Robert Plant. Skinny jeans. In his shiny rouge. Yeah. Yeah, he just looked boss. He still got it. And ever the comedian as well. Yeah. Uh, the, one of the musicians called Tony for one of the songs. He just came in in the wrong key. And uh, Plant, put his hand in the air. I was like, stop made a little joke, said that Tony's been on the jazz cigarettes, apparently. And uh, yeah, they just started again in the same key. It was a laugh, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was it was funny. Really, it's like those yeah, things added, happen. Added to the show. That's why you go to see, see it live, though, because something could like kind of just, I don't know, happen like that. And yeah, yeah I, just... I would never like judge a musician. No, but I'm actually never. glad it happened because yeah. they all laughed about it, showed how much they love working with each other and each yeah, other. Yeah, totally. And, um, it was, yeah, it made for a funny story. What was the thing that he did with his watch? I can't remember. Yeah, they, they were winding down um, a song. I can't remember what it was <laughs> that now. Was it. And uh, it, the lights did start to dim a little bit. And then the singing had finished for a second for a, half a bar. Yeah. And then the Karen singing and Robert Plant was just going. <laughs> Still singing, tapping his watch. Like, those things just, they're so funny yeah. to me. Like, he's got such a good sense of humor in the way that he carries himself on stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, obviously, you're all gonna wanna know whether he played any Zeppelin stuff because, well, let's just say there was a lot of people wearing their Led Zeppelin uniform in the mm -hmm. audience. Um, I can now, well, we can now both say that we have seen 
uh, the Rain Song live, which was pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, that got me that. I've never been so quiet in my entire life. I sat there like this, just listening, <laughs> didn't move. It was beautiful. What's it called? Is it an accordion? Yeah, because um, obviously it was like a folk version, yeah. wasn't it, of, of the Rain Song. She had an accordion. So obviously, you know, Italian heritage. Must have done it for you. It's quite, it's quite famous. Accordion? Yeah, stereotypical Italian instrument, isn't it? I don't know. No, I'm not so. That's a more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, non lo so, non ho capito. Um, he also did uh, a cool little sort of folk medley of four sticks. And right towards the end, um, he kind of did a little bit of a sing along. And believe me, the whole room did sing along with a, like a, a black dog kind of mm. medley with the um, sort of opening verse lyrics. Can I just add, my favorite yeah. song the whole night was a song called Angel Dance, which I didn't know of at all. Didn't they say it was like a South American, um, it had South American heritage, that song, and it was to do with like All Souls Day, and it's a song that they sing. Um, I could be completely wrong <laughs> about that, but it was an amazing song and I loved it. And I was trying to find it on Spotify, I couldn't find it, but it's on YouTube. If you just type Robert Plant Angel Dance, it's a really cool song. Yeah, she said All Souls Day, not Our Souls Day. Oh, not Our Souls Day. <laughs> did I say Our Souls? No, she did. Just in case. <laughs> but in Manchester, it's our kid, isn't it? It's Our Souls. Don't go Googling Robert Plant Our <laughs> Souls Days because you believe me, you'll find some very different content. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that was that was beautiful. Mm. I didn't know what to expect because I didn't know how much I was going to know, and I, I'm, I'm not just like when we went to see him on the Carry Fire tour. I adore that album. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't just there on the, the off chance he's going to play some Zeppelin. Like I'm a sure. fan of how much he's evolved over the years and how he keeps um, reinventing himself and or moving with the times, or then going off and doing something kind of like retrospectively. If that means you know, like Slash is doing now. Slash wants to do um, a compilation album mm -hmm. of all of his favorite kind of blues tunes with different people. Or the plant wants to try something new. He he, he changes and. Yeah, um, that's testament to like... Works with other musicians as well. Yeah, it's testament to the quality of the musicianship that he's built over many, many years. The fact that um, his Led Zeppelin audience like are so loyal that they follow him to, you know, to do the Carry Fire album and then to do the Saving Grace projects. Um, because obviously it's totally different to, to Led Zeppelin. But it was really, it's just really cool, like you said, to see an artist reinvent themselves like this, this far on. It's amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. Recommend if you get to go and see it. 100%. You have to go to him. <laughs> the other thing is as well, like, he's playing, like, classy venues. Liverpool Philharmonic Hall um, is beautiful. I'm going to kill that man one day. <laughs> I was walking on the road and he drove past me and it literally, I had to, like, shield my ears because it was that loud. Like, it yeah. would have, like, hurt my eardrums. It was awful. But... What were you saying? Yeah, Liverpool Philharmonic Hall is uh, a beautiful venue, and um, he seems like he's kind of like seventeen hundred capacity is still massive. Mm. When you compare it to like arena shows of like Heyday Zeppelin, it's a lot smaller. But if you're touring seventeen hundred capacity venues, that's massive. Mm. Um, but he's playing like sophisticated places and. Um, Enjoying himself, isn't he? Yeah. Probably sneaks in a quick uh, Wolves football game. <laughs> uh, I sent him a DM afterwards thanking him for his service in the music industry and told him that there was a pie and a pint on me at any Wolves game of his choosing. He hadn't replied yet. It's pathetic, really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. How long have you got before you need to go? Um, you need to go. You need to wrap it up. My, my appointment's at 20 past three. I need to go. Cool. <laughs> She's got to go. I've got to go. Right. <laughs> Back to me. Bye. Bye.